And Luke's been studying catacombs. <laughs> I mean, if you want to log in, you can, because um, I've just started the meeting. Oh yeah, that's right. We've actually got. Then you can, I can make here yeah, host, and you can share your screen. Okay. Right. Miss, um, and myself, you've lost me that way. And and Matthew Lifty, also known as BGM, um, who's a little less visible these days because he went and had another child. Um, but he provides a lot of infrastructure and translation knowledge, uh, which is really good. Um, the core team, as people hopefully, I feel like I'm talking to here rather than you two <laughs> and you. Um, the core team is funded by um, partner fees, by people like Aiden and Circle and things. It's funded by organizations who choose to be members. Um, it's funded by donations, which is not a huge part. Um, and it also gets work for paid development. So some things like SearchKit was a paid development project, but Coleman's also done quite a lot over and above that. Um, and Form Builder uh, also has a paid portion and an unpaid portion. Um, so the major, yeah, Wikimedia has sponsor quite a lot of paid development and New York State Senate also you know sponsors quite a lot of paid development um, and the core team is not an exact match with the people who can merge code the people who fix bugs the people who yeah the people who do the work is not is not the core team the core team is part of that group so people like you know Pradeep is a pretty pretty frequent contributor of code Aiden is as well um, Matt Wire, he's also a merger. Demerit Cowboy or Dave D is also a merger who's, if you've been anywhere near the code or issue queue, you'll have seen him. We've got a lot of people in Civi Co-op who do quite a lot of work. Um, so yeah, there's a whole bunch of people doing work and not actually core team because um, the core team really exists to create something that's a bit more consistent than just people doing what they feel like um and also you know key things like actually getting the releases out every month um you know engaging doing code review helping with whatever people are working on those sorts of things um yeah that's that's what I can think of to say but do people have some questions <laughs> or sneezes <laughs> No, no, you're all over just me. Just, just, yeah. just me, yeah. Just me yeah. And so Coleman, Tim, and Josh are full time for the core team. Yeah. And they are based in Portugal, San Francisco, and North Carolina. And then Mathieu is part time for the core team. He's based in Montreal. Yeah. Uh, Seamus is in Sydney, and I'm in New Zealand. Wow! wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but it does. It's it's interesting from a time zone point of view. Like I get very frustrated that when I get up in the morning, everything's all going on. Yeah. But now that I'm here, I'm like frustrated that I get up in the morning, no one's around. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's quite good because Tim, although he works offset by four hours in a day, um, because it's 20 hours, so it's like one day backwards and four hours forwards. But he stays up till all hours of the night, so I get quite a good crossover. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you won't, you won't get any of those angry emails. So it's like, why are you emailing at like, it doesn't yeah. all it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This yeah. Is yeah. It's yeah. mostly a message board thing as well, isn't it? Everything. So it's, it's kind of it's oh. lab. It, so you, you talk it thick messages on, on that and most. And it's yeah. Chat and, um, get lab. But it's barely asynchronous. Yeah. So yeah. it's kind of, yeah. yeah. 
who, who's actually been on to the different things like so we've got Matamos. have you you, you use that do you no okay so Matamos is like slack have you used slack okay so we'll this is our goal this is our new new to-do list get you on Matamos. yeah <laughs> Um, normally, Matamos is at its best after a meetup because everyone's sort of quite chatty, and then the longer that it's been since people have met up and two, the more it just becomes. What about this problem? Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so chat. It's chat.civicerium.org. So yeah. it's very simple. You can down. Who uses clients? Do people use? Yeah. Yeah. So you can download a client, or you can just go to that website. Um, and what about online? Is there people who are not been on chat online? Oh, they're really not hearing us in there. So it's really not working, huh? Oh, you can hear. Okay. Oh, you can hear. Okay. Chat's been great. Okay, the people are online from chat. Okay, cool. Sorry. Yeah, probably. I should probably. Okay, we'll pull it back together because I'm we're getting into mixed conversations. So the other online tools is. GitLab, you've, you've used GitLab, yeah. I've seen you on GitLab. Yeah, everyone uses GitLab, GitHub, and Stack Exchange. Do you use that? Okay, so Stack Exchange. Yeah, yeah. 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 So in GitLab, is that lab that can be on the Yeah. I'm, I'm throwing all this in the chat because you're on the last Yeah. Does anyone have any questions through from chat? oh that's good the other thing that i would normally quite like to show people it's probably not possible in this space but is that if you log something and someone comes up with a a fix for it and puts up a pr the link to that pr and if you actually look at that pr it will refer to the test sites like we're in the text and if you click through to that there'll be a demo site loaded up with that fix on it. So you can actually, with no technical skills at all, you can go in and actually test the fix that someone's put forward. Sorry, Ali, uh, what's a PR? Oh, a pull request. So if someone, <laughs> if you log a GitLab and someone says, here's a fix, and there'll be a link. And if you click on that link, you'll see lots of code and stuff. But within that context, you can see somewhere in there, it's got here are the test sites and you can click through that and you'll see the sites. Um, you can log in, you know, with your demo, demo password and you can test it out and, you know, see if it's actually fixed. And if it is, you can comment and say, yes, I tested it and it works. Or you can say, I tested it and it didn't work. And in terms of, obviously that's helpful to see if something's fixed, but it's also a really great way of contributing because, you know, often actually testing things through the ui is quite a hard part because often the information when someone logs something it assumes lots of information you've got to figure out how do i configure this to test this so yeah that's a really really useful thing you can do if uh yeah and someone's mentioned a youtube okay we've got lots of resources coming through here um yeah and have you seen there's an edit link yeah so also once again if you see the docs if something needs to change there's an edit link there use it um it doesn't happen straight away it does create a, a merge request in that case and you do have to wait if no one's noticed it, you can go on to chat and tell people that it exists because, you know, some of these things, there's just information coming from everywhere and 
here. It's not like your spreadsheet. <laughs> Okay, yeah. It was what the process is from somebody going, oh, here's a problem. Yeah. So, yeah, okay. So if someone reports a problem, uh, there's two ways it goes from there. Um, either they just report the problem or, you know, a lot of people, you know, Aiden, Freddie, yourself, I hope, will report the problem with a fix. And and once you've got a fix, then you create a pull request, which is on GitHub. And hopefully someone will look at that and review it, um, see if it works, tell you to write a unit test, um, and merge it at some point. Uh, and once it's merged, so it's in the master branch, and we every month we take whatever's in the master branch, and that becomes the RC branch. And it will be the RC for a month. And we, during that month, we sort of say to everyone, please download it, test it, try it out on your staging site, <laughs> release candidate. Um, and after that month, you know, any fixes that come up, we put into it. And then after that month, we push that out as the next monthly stable release. Um, and if we get a regression, then we always try and fix it first in that RC branch. And then we go, do we need to backport it to the stable release? Or is it okay to wait till that RC comes out? Sorry, again, for the hard of thinking. Uh, hard of thinking. What, what, what's, a, what's a regression? Oh, a regression. <laughs> Something that used to work and it no longer so does. So if a fix comes in and you, you buy a fix, take some time to break something else and then... Yeah. yeah yeah and when you log a bug that's very much what we focus on you know the questions are often is this a regression because you know if something's a regression then we prioritize fixing it because the goal is that it should get more stable every release and more reliable every release we don't want it to get less reliable so you know the goal is that the best release is always the most recent release we mostly manage that. <laughs> it mostly works. Uh, there's no one coming to request from there. No. Do you? Do we have anything else, or should we pass it back to you for your search kit? Or um, yeah, I'm doing. I know I've, I've not. I've muted myself again. Um, okay. <laughs> All right, I've got the mic again, so hopefully people can hear me. Um, so just <laughs> thanks, William. Um, Should have, we spread the have we got any more questions for Eileen about about the, the release cycle or about sort of like how, how people got questions about how to raise bugs? No, it's it's all it's all quiet on the chat box, so I'm going to assume that that's. We've got no further questions, and there, there are no further questions from the floor. <laughs> um, <laughs> There's a baby over there, it's just I'm not sure. <laughs> um, so what will I do? Um, right, I'm going to try and give you a quick... So one of the things that Ali mentioned is that a new feature of CVCRM is um, search kit. Um, and so it's the new search tool. So what I'm going to do is try and hopefully share the screen with you. So I'm going to log on to... Um, and I'll log out first. Um, right. Ah, let me see. Right. So, so I've just logged into um, dmaster.demo.sevcrm.org, which is for Drupal. It is the latest version of CV in in the demo. Um, to enable it no 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 it's only on the latter button oh. so um basically if you're ever wanting to see if, if you're if your version of civi if you're using the drupal install not wordpress there is another wordpress site which may demo later if we get time but this is the main drupal version of how civi should work nice and shiny latest version out of the box um, so if you're ever thinking, oh, this isn't working in my version of um, CV, then you can come in here and see if it's working here as well. So, you know, you can see 
if something's broken or is it just your site? Um, and this is permanently open and you can log in here at any time using the username demo and password demo. So if you're wanting to sort of play along with this at home, then you, you're welcome to log in at the same time I am. Um, the D master, it gets, it's anyone can play, there's kind of like a set of like dummy data in there. All the changes you make get wiped every day, normally about three o'clock in the afternoon UK time. So if we get kicked out in about half an hour's time, it's because the, the site's resetting itself. But it's basically, it's just a very basic um, SimCRM install. So, um, so you should be able to see this. Sorry, I'm just getting a load of pop messages on my screen. Um, and this is what it looks like straight in. Um, so search kit is part of the search toolbar. So if you go up to search and then down at the bottom here, there's a new little entry called search kit. Um, it's now a standard feature of most of CRM releases. So if you don't see that when you log into the top version of CV, then you need to go get in touch with your provider and say, hey, up mush, I want search kit. That's the technical way of asking for it. Um, <laughs> um, so this is the search kit screen uh, and it shows you any safe searches that you've created and obviously in here there's none so i'm just going to start playing about and start creating some there is one in the packet searches now don't forget yeah but i don't know what that means so i was going to ignore that <laughs> uh, <laughs> right okay a packet search is something that's delivered by code so it's created within the code ah, right okay but you can still edit them right okay so, not if you did it, but if Matt did it, then yeah, because he probably put it into a PHP file that would appear and be an extension. Right. So be an extension. But for those of you that there is a discussion going on off mic about what is a package search and what isn't a package search. And to be honest, I still don't quite understand that. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just talk you through the custom searches tab. Yeah. And we'll just say at the moment, package searches also exist. <laughs> um, um, but basically, um, oh, oh my God, this is quite scary. Um, so the creator of um, SearchKit has just entered the building. So he's going to tell me everything I'm about to tell you is wrong. Uh, <laughs> So for me, what I've always said to people when, when looking at searching and looking at getting data out of Studio CRM, reports are okay, but advanced search is a really good tool. Advanced search is really, really where you want to go to get an understanding of the data that's in Civi. Search gets better than that. Um, search kit now really has replaced me sort of like the screen that I go to, to uh, instead of advanced search. So I'll stop waffling and... Um, I need to drop that as well. So I'll go on here and I'll create a new search. Um, so when we come to sort of like save a search, then it will request the search title. But I'll just put. So it just needs a label button on it, like like most things do in in CVCRM. So at the top of the screen, we'll say, "Are we searching for contacts?" But then you break it down. This can be searches for activities, cases, contacts, contributions, events, grants, memberships, participants, more. Um, and from more, you've got case types, contribution pages, custom field groups, discount codes, discounts. Basically, everything that's in CV can be found within Search Kit. For the developers, everything with an API v so apparently for the developers amongst you, that's anything with an API V core. V4. Within API V4. Right, okay. I'm saying these words, I don't know what they mean. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing. You, you don't need to know what it means. Um, you know, this is a tool that you can use without that developer level knowledge. So what you can do as well is, below where we say we're searching for contacts, we've got entity. So entity, entity is a posh word for thing. <laughs> so anything that you've got in Civi becomes searchable within CVCRM, within SearchKit. 
So with contacts, we can now also search contact activities. Um, and that then asks you if you want the contact role to be your activity target or your source or your assignee. So for those of you that are not really into the specific lingo here, the activity target is the person that the next activity is. So your client, the activity source is normally the person that's added to the activity. So normally the worker, in certain circumstances, it may not be, depending on how you set up. So we can search for contacts, and then we can search for the activities they're involved with, but then we can start looping in other things as well. Um, so case activities can be looped in. We can pull in a second contact activity contact into the activity so if you're looking for um activities with a width target you also want to know who adds it then yeah. active contact activity two pulls in the activity source but then you can also search contacts against activities with contributions as well those are contributions and then also events so you can do things like i want to find I have had an event and I want to know anyone who's come along and then signed up for the newsletter afterwards or, or, or has filled in a form afterwards. So people that have introduced an activity at the back of the form, then you can combine the event attendance with an activity search. So it's all the things that kind of people want to do within CBCRM, but previously not been able to configure the search because the advanced search wasn't powerful enough events are okay the reports are okay but they're fairly limited in their structure so it's basically if you've got an oddball question about cbcrm then ask it in search here and then you can pull the details out um and get back the with optional as i also get <laughs> um, i was hoping somebody could explain that better than me oh just basically means it has to have them so right, if you're okay. looking for searching the contact yeah. We must have an activity. Otherwise, when you click search, it will search for everyone in the database, whether they've got that activity or not. So right. you've got okay. to have with required. Okay. I don't know anything about it. Right. <laughs> Don't know how much you, any of you heard down the line there. Um, so yeah, I. So I. Yeah, you've thrown me there, Sarah. Thank you. With uh, <laughs> required, yeah. So we set it as with required, and we've got to pull out the um, targets that the, the contacts that meet the criteria. So the criteria down here at the bottom where it says where. So initially we can say where the contact type is individual, or we can get rid of that and say activity type. And we'll go with meeting. So this is just basically a list of um, contacts that we've had meetings with from this organization. I might want to do tell a friend because the custom data set in this has hundreds of tell a friends and hardly any meetings. Right. So if I hit search there, oh, exactly. <laughs> so in this this database, nobody's recorded any meetings. So we've got to come back with non found. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm told in the custom data. Okay, tell a friend. So that's an activity. Yeah. Right. There you go. Told you there was something there. <laughs> Can we change that custom data set? <laughs> so basically, the, 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 the yeah, exactly. The search has kind of constructed itself. It's because it's a contact search. It's brought in the contact ID by default and the display name and then the subject of the um of the activity if you want to include other fields then you can start including other fields here um, and what you can do is you can include contact fields 
and you can include activity fields as well. Uh, so we'll just go with the contact fields. Um, <laughs> right, okay. What I'm trying to do is include yes. the email field. Oh, but you actually still have to include email as an entity. There is a PR to make that. Yeah. By the next couple of releases, time that might be slightly easier. But yeah, so at the moment, email, what you need to do is actually go back, configure the search, go back to your entities and say that actually you want the email as well. So contact emails. Again, we make it we, we required. That's a good example of when optional versus required. Right, okay. Do you only want contacts with emails or do you have all the contacts with their emails if they have them? I'm learning. <laughs> and this is great. I'm learning. <laughs> right. So if I leave this as with optional, this will pull in, still pull in all the contacts. And where there is a email for them, it will pull in the email. If I set it to with required, it would just then narrow the search down and get to only contacts that have got a email completed. And I'm just sending it to the primary email. So I'm going to dig into sort of home or main or work. But if you scroll back down to the search again, the search results have emptied themselves, but because I've included the contacts email field, it automatically included the email field. I hit search and the results come up. But basically, each time you go and edit either the where or the entity list, or you go and add in a new field for the clients into the search, that box will empty itself, and you just need to hit search again. But it's a search. So all you're doing is looking at the data that exists in the database. You're not overwriting anything. You're not delete. You can delete things, but don't. Um, you can go in and you can delete things, but you you just need to sort of like run the search again, just so you can constantly just update, update what's there. So if I pull in some more um, contact fields, so if we go oh, and the, and again, it's sort of like it. The, the as you type in, the options like define themselves. So we will put gender in, and we'll put age. So if the contact has given us a birth a date of birth, then it will um, calculate the age there as well. So if I search there, oh, for some reason it's brought in the household ID as well. I'll just take I'll take that out. Search again. So there we go. Not everyone here has got an email. Not everyone's got their, their gender. We've got the uh, we've got we've got ages and gender for some people. I mean, as you'll notice, what we've got is we've got some sort of like duplicate um, duplicate sort of lines here. So what you can do as well is where are we? Group by we can actually group by contact ID. So we just want to return one line per contact. We can go search. Um, and we're back. We just have the same search. But now we've got a just a one line per contact return. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, it will show you sort of like how many results you have. So if all you're doing is saying, actually, how many people have had, we had a meeting with this quarter? You can just like ram that into search quit. You don't have to save it. You can come out and you can just run a, a really, really quick query in here as well. I say quick, obviously it's slightly slightly more involved than that. But it's only taking 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, let's be honest, if we're trying to get that, it's taken about half a day. <laughs> yeah, um, but um, what else we can do is something like this as well. So um, what I'm going to put in here is I'm going to add another column in. I don't want that. I want the contact activities, they want the activity ID. So if I search that again, um, contact, ID, contact activities, yeah. Oh, it's done it, oh, it's, it's done it automatically now, no? 
<laughs> my, my, <laughs> my work yeah. version of this, what it would normally do by default, it, it was if you've got one contact that has three activities and you grouped it by, then the activities was that you'd get a list of three activity IDs. And then what you can do is you can apply a field transformation and turn it from a like a, from a, a list into account but now it's doing it completely by default into a into account so what we've got here is we've got a list of individual contacts with their contact details and a count of the number of telefriend activities they've had but if you're wanting to do we've got if this were meetings if this was a more useful activity that was in the contact <laughs> that was in the dummy data set we could do from here this quarter we've had meetings with 91 people but for each of those people they one person's had two meetings this person's had four meetings what we can't do is we can't do any um querying more querying of the data here but if you go to the action list you can download it direct to a spreadsheet um so that used to be sort of like the export to csv value um but now it's download spreadsheet um that's kind of like a default setting for everyone what you can also do is you can select all your search results and then the search actions again you get more search actions when you're selecting that little arrow does that change recently too see the arrow needs to select them <laughs> this is literally mind-blowing <laughs> So basically, um, if we scooch that back down to the bottom, we, we've got 91 results in here, this search, but we're paging at 50. So we're seeing the first few results. So, and on here, when you go to select all, so I've gone a bit too far, I can actually select none, or I can select the 50 pages that we've got here, or we can select all pages. So now we've selected all 91 contacts. And now we've got the contact actions, so we can delete. So when I said by doing a search, you're not going to delete. You can delete, but you probably shouldn't. Um, but then it's the, the, the standard contact action. So we can send these people an email. We can export them into just a contact export. We can add or remove them from groups, run mailing labels, update contacts. Oh, they update. Previously, when you used advanced search, you find your search results that meet your criteria. And then if you want to update them, you need to go away and find a create a profile with which to update these contacts. Now, what you can do is, as long as you know which field you want to update, here's all the, a list of the fields that are available. I'll try and do one that doesn't mess about too much of the data. Actually, no, we'll, we'll change all the gender. Um, so, and we'll make it, because. It's got to be changed back in 15 minutes anyway, so you know, what damage can we do? Um, <laughs> so if I were to hit update contacts now, which I won't do, it was then. So we can then say, okay, Eileen's given me permission, Coleman. <laughs> so we can update. So we can update directly from the search results. And one thing you should know if you use larger databases is that is really good to time out. But like we've done 100,000 in one thing with that. It doesn't try out the same as a lot of other things. Oh, yeah. Sorry? Yeah. I think it just uses paging with like yeah. 500 at a time, 50 at a time. But it, oh, it doesn't use actual pure, yeah. but it doesn't time out the same way that other okay. things do. Okay, so I, I don't know if people heard this. Um, but what Ireland's saying is, updating contacts like that um previously when you're doing batch update by a profile you, you can update 100 contacts at a time um and finally for larger databases, larger data sets where you might have thousands of columns you can update thousands of contacts in the same way yeah. using that tool you don't have to break it down you don't have to search for 100 at a time and update 100 at a time just tell them i've literally done 130,000 which I accidentally put the wrong data on <laughs> in one action. So it, it really doesn't time out. Right, okay. Um, so what else do we do? If you know how to create an edit in place, like edit it, make it editable. 
you know how to do that? <laughs> Uh, no. That's a nice feature. So if you save it and create a display. Okay, so what we're going to do is we've got to save the example search. <laughs> and we've got to, so oh, back, if it, yeah, you have to do it on the app, yeah. shouldn't you? Yeah. So, yeah. You smart groups from here too. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Ed, yeah. so this is our basic search that we want to reuse. But we want to take it and, and give it out to some another member of staff in a slightly different form. So what we can do is what we can do is from this. So we've saved the search results. We've gone back to example search, and now we can either add like a smart group, which basically looks like a smart group based on these search results, and that will constantly update up based on these search results. Or you can create a display. I'm going to create a table. I can see there that list and grid are also available. I've not used those myself, so I would say she hasn't worked out what they're useful for either. So you know, fair enough. Um, so basically, what we've got here is um, a table. It's all, all the fields that we've already added to our search. So the contact IDs there, the display names there. Um, so you will see the in place edit. You won't see that on any of the ones which you which you've got group buys and things like that because you can't group ones in your shell. Okay. But some that so well, you can see it, but it's so when you get to gender, yeah, that's not grayed out. So you could put it on gender. Yeah, let's do that. The so check in place edit. Okay. So, so yeah. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just hit preview, and then I'll come back and yeah. edit it. So we'll just preview the table. It's basically a table version of the search that we've created. And that just creates itself down there at the top. You can change your column type. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Here you go. You can see we've got contact ID, display. And it's all fairly technical. So I know what that means, a list of contact activities, subject, or list of contacts, contact email. But, you know, that's not particularly user friendly if you're handing it on to a member, another member of staff. Um, so we can just go into the header and just relabel it to make it a bit more kind of like user friendly. Um, you want to make it sortable? Yes, you can do. Um, in place edit is grouped out because it is like a, it's got a count function on it, but anything that doesn't have that kind of function on the, at the column level. We can put in other. Um, we, can, we can put in other, other bits of text. I'll come back and demo it in a moment. So we can take the brackets years out of the age column. We've got age, um, but also empty place holder. So if that's empty, we can say um, no DLB in database. So, you know, it makes it sort of like, why is that column empty? So we can, we can say why. Um, gender. So we can actually put an in place, in place edit button on there. So we'll come back and show that in a moment. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll take out the extra bit in front of the email. Um, but we can also make it a link. Oh, if that could open up somewhere else in CVCRM. Um, I won't make it a link because. I've not played with that fun. Okay, thanks, Sarah. Well, you quite useful as to make because you get view links on display names. You might want to put an edit link on the on the next ID or something. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I've got um display name. We'll make that a link, and that will link to view contacts in a new tab. Um, and contact ID, we'll just leave it as it is. So if then we scooch back down um, and then refresh. Yeah. It's taken a while because we've made a few changes, but now Dr. Adam, we can click through there and link in from the results direct into the, um, into the contact database. Um, and they got here, here we've not got an age, it just says no DB in database. Everyone's a female, um, but we can actually now go in and 
edit that. So if I click off there, then we can take that to mail and make that. Up. So we can actually edit line by line within the search results. Um, make of that what you will. I'll, I'll think about you, you know. So that's a way of like, doing quick data updates that you can hand off to a specific member of staff and they can go in and, and quickly. They don't need to go into the full contact record, they can just edit straight from the search results. So we're going to um, save that. Um, and what I'm going to do is go back into the compose search screen. So this is the editing the table. Um, and what I do is I'm going to add in. Um, bum, 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 bum. Oh, we're going to put in where actively type is tell a friend and. No, I'm trying, I'm trying to make this way too complicated. <laughs> I mean, as you can see, there's plenty of places where we can go with this. Um, so here we go. We've got back to our our search table. But if you want to make that more powerful for your colleagues, then you can add a form. Hopefully, this is taking its own sweet time. So it's called, at the moment it's called, here it's called forms, and in my version it's called displays. So it's basically, you can put, um, make sort of like a little search form on top of your tables, so that other members of the staff can, you, you've selected the data to interrogate, but other people can then sort of then do sort of like, you know, you can search by and so additional filters. So filter by contact name. But show me everyone in this list that's first name, last name is Smith. Um, we can put the activity date in there. So people that have had their meeting in the last three months or in the last week. So then you can sort of like filter down those results. People just start to see only the data that they need to see. Um, it's coming up to three o'clock. Um, there's loads in, in, in search kit. This is really, really just scratching the surface. So is there anything I think I should demo or? I can just go through the, the data segmentation because that's new and very few people have seen that. Actually, um, do you want to swap places and okay. you could be logged in here? All right. I mean, I just want to, yeah. Okay, so this is a bit. <laughs> yeah, that was a Craig, Craig's run to the loo, just to say, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the data segmentation is not necessarily on a lot of people's installs yet because it's, I think, the, this month's release is the first month that has it. Um, but you can create data segments that are pretty flexible. Um, so let's, we're going to do this for contributions. Um, so, if level uh, contribution, so yeah, this might more. I won't try and give too much. So, you can create multiple levels. So, I'm going to create one that says, and um, I just want to remind you guys that, um, we stopped serving at three o'clock. Um, okay, cool. fabulous. You know that, of course. Okay. Thank you. So let's, I'm going to create a, a level that's for stingy gifts. Um, <laughs> and I think we'll go for that total amount being, okay. So let's go for less than $5, okay. Um, we'll go for acceptable. And that's going to be a total amount of uh, between We'll go five and ten dollars. Um, I'm pretty sure it, we discussed this the other day. I'm pretty sure it includes the number at both the no, I think I think yes, I think it includes the number at both ends. So you probably want to do and then nice. We'll give them nice. The nice is great, greater than equal to ten dollars. So we've created this categorization of you know what these gifts, what we think of these gifts. Um, and that now, I have defined that, that's, that's available in every search now. So when you go to your contribution search, um, 
and we can actually add that. So we're going to add in total amount here, and I'm also oops, total amount, and I'm also going to add in gift level, and that's there available as a field there. Um, I don't know why these fifty dollar ones are not showing up. That's an interesting question. Um, sorry. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. So, yes, so, there's a, there's a gap to... okay. So you can see that's what it's done. I can also group by this gift level. Um, so as Craig pointed out, it's now switched those other things to be counts and sums. So you can make this nice little table of gift levels. Which basically says we've had one acceptable donation of with the total of five dollars. So it's just created that little chart of them. And once you create that, that's visible for search kits or everywhere. So in the, another sort of example that you might use is like breaking up people by age group. You know, you've got uh, your kids, your teenagers, your adults, or something like that. So you, <laughs> yeah yeah another way we use it at wikimedia is we divide by financial types is either it's this type or it's not this type basically yeah. that's what we care about so yeah, I, 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 so i'm just thinking from a manchester mind point of view one of the things that we quite frequently um i get requests for data is oh, we need to know clients that have used this service and I, want, I need to know this age group and they've got an age group pattern and then another manager comes along and say I need to know everyone broken down by age group because but because they've got a different funder they've got a different breakdown of where where age breaks them yeah. so now I can just say right just slam in the date of birth and then we can just use search kit to sort of like extract that data as we need it and yeah I can do it within CV. I don't have to then pull it into into Excel and then do the calculations in Excel. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to tell my boss this. My job's going to get to <laughs> <laughs> um, And you can use that in the where clause as well. Um, now, something that's a bit tricky to figure out, which we figured out the other day, is that if you, you can also, now where's my other tab? Um, so I'll just add a table so we can get this. So when you come down to gift level, if you see this gift segment gift level label, blah, blah, you can put that into the URL. So this is a little, this is not really exposed in the UI, um, but you can, so we, we're now going to our search kit that we created. So we're gonna view that. And in, this is, if I get this right. Oh, well, I got it wrong. <laughs> okay, let's, I can't actually see what it looks like there. I did actually document this, redocument it the other, I was actually kind of hidden from me in the URL, so I can't quite see it. Uh, what does it look like? Oh, sorry. Uh, segment gift level. Hmm. I feel like that should have worked. <laughs> um, I documented it in docs the other day, or whatever I documented it as working. Um, but it does work. Uh, if you get it right, I won't fiddle around trying to get it right here, but where we were using it was we created that table and then we created another one with the same uh, field in it and we had the link so you can look at your, you've got 31 stingy gifts and you can click through to another display and see the details of those 31 people who should give more. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's the short version. I don't know if Coleman's got anything he wants to add or if anyone does, but I just wanted to, to just cover that off briefly. Um, I think you covered it well. Else? Okay. 
The only other thing I'd say is package searches, which Craig was too scared to get into. Yeah, uh, Craig knows nothing about. Okay. <laughs> So the idea with package searches is where we want to go with the UI is replacing a lot of the UI with search kit and form builder over time. And one of the key advantages of this is the idea that if you have got a UI, so you've got the grand summary screen, which I presume, is that what's on the tab, Coleman? Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah, if you go to a, a contact, you can show that. Yeah, okay, so let's do that. Um, so this is really just done in grants at the moment. There is an admin UI you can enable it for, and you've got these different fields. So we'll add a grant because it's really dull. Um, okay, this is getting a bit painful. Oh yeah, there's no um, yeah, yeah, there's no default. Right. Okay, we've no, lost so. interest in that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> add a grant type. I may never get back to the original screen. Shafts and whatever shafts that is, that's what's in me when I can play. Okay. I have no idea where this tab is there. So the problem is see this, I've got this uh, gotcha. It's the um you know, just um okay. it's the next one along, which doesn't help you, but maybe I can use um, Oh, you haven't saved it anyway, you just need to save that. Okay, this is getting really painful. So what we'll do is we'll just go back and pretend that that worked. <laughs> um, and we'll come back to a whole new tab of search kit. Um, so the point is that on your site, because we used to have these endless long conversations, because apparently for some particular site, it's so much more useful to have this or have that or you might be a site where you're actually requesting grants, not receiving them. So you could edit it, uh, edit that grant, um, application receive, we'll change it to application sent. Okay, that's not a great change and it's probably not, it's probably gonna let me down, but in theory, what's gonna happen now is that by virtue of me having made that change, now when I go and look at my, Yeah, you can see it's now changed to application set rather than receive. So the, the real benefit of this is not that you can do all sorts of amazing things right now, but that as we start to put these into extensions and into core, you'll be able to customize these more easily than you know what we've been able to in the past. Yes, there's editing template files, isn't it? Yeah. Which is what we've had to do in the past and then. Yeah causes problems when you upgrade. <laughs> There's the goal. Oh, so, yes, sorry, I'm also getting the hard of thinking. Um, so, so you can do this on the grants tab now, but the, the, the chances you can then do it on the, like the activities tab, and then for each organisation, they can see the activities detail that is specific or that matters to them rather than the standard. Right, yeah. So that's that's just talking about where we want to go with this, right, what okay. the vision is. And I, we can also do, some of you may have seen that there's a new Civicium administration UI that's not installed by default. That's where we've at least started down this path a tiny bit. Okay. Yeah. I just I just want to point out, Eileen, that for anyone that has, has a need for customizing a tab now, you can do it simply by replacing the tab. And so if you install the contact summary editor uh, or contact layout editor extension, that lets you turn tabs on and off. Um, and so you can turn off, for example, the, the contribution tab, just get rid of it, and then create a new search kit display that shows contributions added to the contact summary screen. And you've, you've just effectively made your own version of that tab. Okay. We're not going to do that. <laughs> Don't tell well, them, well, well it's, it's non it's non destructive. You know, you're not you're not really deleting anything from Civi Sierra. That's just why they're not going to do it. <laughs> We'd like to break stuff. <laughs> Yeah, so because I've enabled that extension, I could now do the same thing with the custom field screen now if I wanted. So the custom field screen that you're used to here, it still looks very much the same as it 
is it this one? Yes, yeah, this one, isn't it? It still looks very much the same, but if I that's wanted to kit. change it, that's a search kit now, yeah. Yep, that's search kit. Yeah. And you can so see the now, difference. You can see the difference um, because search kit has this drag and drop um, rows for reordering yeah. things. You can do that. <laughs> so you, you can enable that extension now. The only thing I would say is that the goal is to add more screens to it. And so at some point we might add another, you know, we might make price sets or something, go through the screen. If you enable that extension, you're not going to get asked later if you want to enable another screen we've added we converted um which is you know not necessarily a bad thing but just something yeah yeah. Um, for the developers, you know, oh, well, actually, no, for everyone, you can clone. So if you want to share what you've done, you can use clone. Uh, and for the developers, you can actually export search kits, stick a code, and you put it in your extension, someone loads it up, it will be one of those package searches for everyone else. So then they can. Uh, okay. That's the uh, I get I wonder how the export would work. But yeah, if you're creating an extension with your own bit that you've already created. Yes. So yeah. So you'll probably see that more and more things yeah. popping up in package searches as as extension writers start to do it. That'll probably happen. We'll put yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's a good example. Yeah, because a lot of them, the the simple, you know, things that you can replace quite easily. Whereas core often has these things where it's like, oh, but someone once upon a time thought this thing would be really useful. It's like, oh, really? <laughs> Excellent. I say we are now that we can hear we'll <laughs> yeah, now we can hear we can go. <laughs> Any questions from anybody in chat from being very quiet, everyone? <laughs> Will says it looks good. And Will picked up the criteria thing too. Yeah. One one other thing that's particularly with us uh, is the without. Yeah. Right. Um, so there's always yes so we can find those terrible people who did not donate <laughs> yeah. yeah without is definitely a um on larger databases that can be problematic query wise at times but you know if you've got a larger database you're probably already thinking about that <laughs> So yeah, that Rolando sort him out. <laughs> um, the other thing is you can create custom, you know, you can select what actions you have. You know, when you're doing these tables or whatever, um, you know, it cut it comes with actions, enable actions, you can turn that off, you can make it auto run, all that sort of stuff, change your thing. But somewhere or other, oh, is it here? Yeah, it can get really ugly if you play around with this, but yeah. <laughs> you can add buttons and it's gonna, it's already added these, these lovely buttons. Um, but what I do for is kind of create data entry screens sometimes. So it's like, here it's got a little thing so you can filter to find people and then it's got add payment and it's just, uh, you know, quite an easy way to create little workflow related screens so that's mm -hmm. something else um you muck around a bit but yeah i don't know has anyone got any more questions here or 
I'd say it's really, I mean, from, from a search kit looks, you know, it's like the future of Sydney, isn't it, really? I suppose the only other question we were talking about earlier with Coleman being online might be like, how far along is form builder and when is that going to be at the same maybe level as um, uh, search? Because that's when CV comes kind of standalone. Form builder is uh, is still getting um, is is under active development. Like it's every every month we're putting out new updates to it. Um, so right now we've got um, required fields and recapture in the works. Um, just added a feature where you can redirect uh, more in a more targeted way so that if you like create a new contact with form builder, you can then redirect to a, a page specific to that contact, like their summary page. Um, we've got um, uh, just added a feature where you can automatically create a navigation menu entry for a form, um, uh, same way you can for reports. And it's got a uh, very good integration with search kit at this point. Um, I would say that um, probably because of the development pressure on search kit um, and the speed that that project was going, um, form builder is actually better at creating search forms now than it is at creating uh, data entry or, you know, submission forms. Um, you can, you can create very complex uh, forms for search kit that have filters or that are, you know, serve as contact summary tabs or dashlets for your dashboard. Um, another feature that is, hasn't, wasn't advertised very heavily, um, but is a very cool addition to form builder is that it now works effectively as a layout builder. Um, so that if you have multiple forms or multiple search displays that you want to put onto a screen that maybe you want it to look something like a dashboard, you want to create a new, a new type of dashboard or a new like per user dashboard, you can drag or you can create, um, you can create a, a search, a form builder like mini forms and style them as panel panes and, you know, compose them as a layout of in rows and columns. So form builder is, is getting. It always breaks when I demo. <laughs> <laughs> what was that, Eileen? When I demo, I always have trouble getting the two columns side by side because if they're long columns, then it, it decides that really they should float left and right and doesn't want to mm. truncate them. So you should demo it because I always break it when I demo it. <laughs> well, uh -huh. maybe we'll put that in. Maybe that's something that um, Will will do at his next one. Maybe yeah, that's something that's for Will fine. to have a play around with. Yeah, that's, fine. <laughs> that's fine. But yeah, I, I just wanted to. I mean, I want to stress that Form Builder is still getting developed. Um, the the project is not stagnant. It's moving forward every month um, with you know with new with new developments. And there is a monthly conference call um, that's open to anybody who wants to help contribute to Form Builder. Um, we just had one uh, a week or two ago um, that was very productive, and we have um, already a couple of um, items ticked off from the list that we generated in that meeting. No, oh, excellent. And one thing I would say with form builders, one of the things is there's so many things that could be worked on that I think in some ways it's a little bit of a challenge to figure out what the most important things are. So I think that's a key point of that meeting, but also... I guess Coleman tends to be a little reactive just because of the assumption that what people are asking for is what's most important, which, you know. There's a sprint in two days' time that you might just want to do a few. <laughs> you know? Right, right. I'm happy, to, uh, I'm happy to jump on a call and, and work on some stuff with you guys at the sprint. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to, to Manchester sprint, yes. Manchester sprint. You've got a mic. Well, you can have a mic. Mike. Aiden, Aiden's going to tell you about the Manchester oh, Sprint. Sorry. I'm going to tell you the Manchester Sprint. Yeah. Okay, the Manchester Sprint is coming up um, soon in October, um, and we uh, so yeah, it's here in Manchester. Um, we've got a weekend of of things happening, a bit to be determined yet on the Saturday Sunday, and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is Sprint stuff, um, and I think we have the entire core team coming across entire maybe minus one minus Seamus. minus Seamus okay um so Tim Coleman Eileen Matteo and yeah, Matthew, yeah Matthew. so and Josh. and Josh uh all coming across which is great and with a big focus on um on search kit and form builder uh, and one of the things we're hoping to do 
yeah, is to be able to make a bit of progress uh, as we're talking about in terms of replacing some of those core screens um, with search kit based, form builder based um, things. And some of that really is in terms of we take some of these slightly harder things and you know you see how far you can get with them, at which point you then go, hmm, can't quite do this bit. Coleman, what do we, <laughs> how do we fix this? Uh, and that's how new features have, have come into it uh, already. So a lot of that sort of stuff we're hoping to do. I was going to say that all sounds like that all sounds sort of like fairly kind of like techie to me and then there's someone that's kind of like more at home in the admin interface which is why i really love search kit is is there a way that sort of like the less technically adept of us can contribute to that process very much so <laughs> <laughs> funny you should ask that one Gary. but yes absolutely um uh, so there's a lot of things different uh, things there so one just is in terms of testing stuff and making sure that you know things actually work um or looking at things and going you know but but why do we do that and why can't we do this instead um so a lot of things from that side of things uh obviously documenting stuff so all the the manuals and so on have have screenshots of lots of stuff um as we're replacing things we need somebody to go through create new screenshots and update descriptions and stuff and so it's so a lot of um non-development stuff that's necessary for the kind of a wider thing in terms of being able to move ahead and get some of these false things in place. How many sprints go that must be particularly suitable because if that can we build this screen, you know, we start up the idea, oh let's see if I can build this screen and search it. And then you know we'll get a brick wall and it's development, but you know it's like so it's, it's almost like a way that we can get a chance as kind of like a non-developer to sort of like have an idea or come up with an idea, test it out, and then go, oh, it's broken. Then there's somebody around, A, to give us that bit of a guiding hand in, in developing things in the first place, but then picking apart what isn't, what isn't working. Yeah. Okay. The other thing I think a non-developer might do, sorry. The other thing I think a non-developer might choose to do is actually build up a really useful search kit that maybe is not appropriate for core, and then just, you know, talk to a developer who's there have it packaged in an extension so you can share it because I think that's another really useful uh, that's something we ideally would have is like more extensions that just either one extension a whole lot of handy dandy things or you know a bunch of extensions with useful things as sharing them because yeah I mean one thing I would say is if you are wanting to attend is that it's very useful to be able to to explain to devs sometimes that what they're doing is madness and <laughs> really as end users this is what we need because yes because yes, um, someone will someone will, will create something and they think well oh, this is the best way to do that and you try and use it and go what you know like sometimes when you know grant gets moved to extensions we forget about looking at them <laughs> Surely that I'm, was I'm not going to mention that <laughs> <laughs> Anything else from anybody, or because I think we we're going to get kicked out in uh, five minutes, so, and we're going to bundabus. If anybody wants to join us, it's in Manchester. You know, it might be a bit of a trek for you, but not for us. <laughs> <laughs> Anything from anybody? Very quiet. <laughs> bundabus is amazing. <laughs> Thanks, Peter. <laughs> Yeah, okay. thank you to the people who came remotely. Yeah, um, thanks, and sorry and for the also noise. The people who came in, yeah, <laughs> we we did talk about how to off the people on the table next to us. But... <laughs> yeah, they've gone now. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we'll look forward to seeing you all either in October or in um, at Will's next visit. When when's your next meeting, Will? Uh, so I'm in. To put that onto cvcrm.org but it's scheduled for september yeah so not long That's no not yeah i need to start organizing it yeah um and, and what i want to do myself is actually get the manchester meetings a bit more regular um and get them kind of like more in person um at the moment it's searching for venues if anyone knows of like venues are available for free that's my price tag free um in and around manchester i mean this has been nice but th th there are limitations uh but yeah just even if it's like a couple of year and then we can get a bit more hands on and just let people come in and, and play with things themselves and maybe do sort of a bit of if people want that bit of training at the kind of like admin level 
then we can try and organize that between ourselves and, and play, have a play with things. So that's where I want to get to. So like the two Manchester meetups a year somewhere and then sort of like a, a social thing happens. Now that we're not threatened with death and disease, well, we are, but well, it's still there. We've just given up. up on it. <laughs> <laughs> the UK has just given up on COVID, doesn't it? Doesn't exist. Forget about it. <laughs> and whatever comes next, hedge, hedgehog fox or whatever's yeah. next. Yeah. Well, excellent. Well, thanks everybody for attending virtually and thanks people here for attending in person in real life. And, you know, like obviously Raleen for traveling thousands and thousands and thousands of miles to get here. I mean, yeah. it's lost How keen? How keen? <laughs> and to Luke for not getting too bored. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you everyone, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye. 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 Okay, you've got quite a, a way home. Hmm?